Hello, James. Nice to see you. James! Hi, Aaron! Hey, guys! Hi, Katie. Hey, this is Tomo. Tomo. Back in. Hey. Hi. Hey, hey. I've not seen you forever. Can everybody here? Yay! Uh... Thank you guys for all doing this. <laughs> we are going to get so many hits. <laughs> <laughs> So, so day we all. So rad to see everybody. I know, it's crazy. It's been so long. I mean, you guys see each other, though. It's so strange how far away everyone is. Jamie, where are you? I'm in London. Aaron, is that the same house that you used to have back in the day? Yes, sir. Right on the side of that mountain out there. Yeah, it's all rainforest behind me, so. And you garden. And I garden. Who are that's, you? That's been my, uh, <laughs> who are you? you? Yeah, man. That's why Aaron's gonna live to 120. <laughs> <laughs> James, real quick question. Have you read all those books behind you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have read a fair few of them. And Tama, have you climbed that ladder behind you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've almost fallen down that ladder every morning. I still see so many of you so often, but I miss getting to play with you guys in terms of act and bring these characters to life. Did we know? Did we know what we had then? Probably not. We were, I was so young, my God, I had no idea. I suppose 20 years on now, I kind of take the fact that we're all friends. We like to see each other and find out what everybody's doing, etc., etc. I suppose now I kind of take that as a given. I think we kind of bonded pretty close very early on. So before we started shooting the miniseries, they had this brilliant idea to send everyone who was military personnel on the Galactica to actual boot camp. Who who here? I know it was Jamie and Grace and Tomo and myself and Aaron. Did AJ. you know AJ? AJ was there. AJ was there. AJ was there. Yeah, yeah. Was there. Yeah. So we found ourselves sort of like walking onto this bus and being transported for three days off to learn how to be soldiers. That was run by a former retired army ranger, Ron Blacker. And then it was scary. Mm -hmm. They were off the top for sure. But I remember getting there and Grace and I were sharing a room and I woke up in the middle of the night because they had just cut my hair and I was <laughs> crying because my hair was so short. And I went into the bathroom with bobby pins to make sure I could still twist it up and look like a girl in my mind. I remember when we had to uh, line up in rank order and uh, I don't know, it was probably like, it was like 600 hours. And then uh, Ron Blecker, who was doing it, would go down the line and he would inspect everyone. He'd like stand right in front of your face and he would check if you had your pen, your hat, like everything. And then I remember Tomo, you and Nikki had like, one of you didn't have a hat and one of you didn't have a pen. I didn't have and my pen. Then he, yeah. <laughs> and then he told everyone, to get down and do push-ups until you guys came back with your stuff. And it was on like really sharp gravel, at least that's what it felt like to my little fragile hands. And we had to do it until you guys went up, came back. And then I remember when you guys got back, like the way that we all stood up and just looked at you guys, <laughs> it was like, it was like such a smart move. I totally remember. I was worried that. you guys were gonna go full metal jacket on me that night. I was gonna get bars of soap and a towel. <laughs> I remember just feeling that, that, that uh, this was some next level shit that it, it was a, there was a realization for me that this was going to be a different than any other gig that I'd done before. It sunk in when we were on that little junket. This yeah. is going to be a little different. Oh, but it, it definitely started really seriously, like really yeah. seriously. Yeah. And we got off we the bus. Like, uh, and we were paraded out and shouted at. Yeah. And then anybody who spoke, it was the full deal for a bit and then gradually Ron Blecker started geeking out on us and by the end we were sitting down watching the original series with popcorn. <laughs> One of the things I really cherish apart from all of that was kind of the creative endeavor. The minds that were working on the show, the, the writers, the directors, the people in post-production so that when you saw what we'd been doing and then it was all put together, it was like holy frack. And because the show in some fashion was being created while we were making it, yeah. it was like everything was up for grabs like the whole time. It kind of, not, not that it was the end of the world, but you could put yourself in that place in, in, in those incredible sets. We got to live this thing. And I think this was the first time in my entire career where I was allowed to 
ad lib and to really live and be the character. And, and I learned so much about how to be a good leader on set because of Eddie and Mary and Hogan. I remember stepping onto a stage one time and uh, was walking through on the inside of the set. And I don't know anybody else is on the stage. And I hear this. <laughs> What the hell is going on back there? And I run around and it's Hogan warming up his voice. I'm like, this is the scariest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, oh, that's what you have to do. Okay, I just walk on and start talking. It's like, this guy's <laughs> way beyond me. We've all done lots of you know television and stuff since then, but um, I, I don't know. Most things that you do, they kind of have, uh, you're sort of boxed in to whatever the, the product is. We had no box. Like, we, it's ironic. We were telling this claustrophobic television show about people who couldn't go anywhere, do what they wanted to do, do anything. But in story terms, we had no box. We were in this space where there were no constraints on where this story might go. And almost said it best at the time. He said, you'll never, ever get this again, you young folk who are only just starting out. And I despised him for that nihilism um, and him projecting onto me what his limited imagination couldn't like encompass. Um, but the, the arse turns out to be right. And there is just no experience like it creatively. So, I mean, it, it, it's very frustrating. To, to continue working in this field and have to look over your shoulder at yourself. For me, it was very difficult because the last two seasons of Battlestar, especially, as you spoke on, was so collaborative. It was so, you would go in and there was a, there was a, we expected a certain respect and we were given it, especially by a lot of uh, writers and directors we had worked with before. And we had those relationships. It was, it was just, um, you were allowed to try things and if they didn't work, it didn't work. And everybody knew and you'd move on. And it was beautiful in that way. That experience was so special. I think for me personally, I went on to um, a cool show right after that, but I was working with completely different people who had a different way of working. And um, for me, it was a little shocking. Sometimes when uh, I had suggestions or things like that, they weren't uh, uh, so well received. And it wasn't that so much. It was just, it was the relationship that we had, the family that we had. It was just, we got to a point after so many years where we were so comfortable and it was expected that we could do our thing and, and, um, and uh, for me, it was a little shocking. And, and again, just like Jamie said, Eddie was so right. <laughs> he was so right. I hate that guy. To be able to work with him and and be transported, um, sometimes against your will, into these scenes where you found yourself in awe of someone across from you was really a gift. When we started to realize that it was resonating beyond us, um, it's, it's just a special thing to feel like we're not just having a, a great and integral time, but people are actually feeling it too. And like, wow, this is starting to, you know, you, the, the ripple effect of it was, was special for a show. I miss the, the camaraderie of, of this, like daily or weekly. And of course, we've all kind of moved on to many other little families and little, you know, casts and crews and, but there was something about that one for me anyway, because it kind of was the first one of any great weight that it, that these people that are on this, that I don't see enough of, and some of them I haven't seen in ages, but we reunite here and there. And that's what I miss the most is that, you know, spending time with everybody, the weekly potluck and 72 cases of wine that would happen at somebody's house, either Jamie or James or Michael Reimers. And, and then at 5.30 in the morning, Callus would be, Aaron, the problem with the world is... <laughs> <laughs> and I would just love it. It's the, it's the beautiful friendships that we made. Um, and that's really when we got to blow off the steam too, right? So um, those were my favorite, favorite things. I've never had that with any other show. I've never kept in contact with, with amazing, beautiful people like these people here. And uh, yeah, I, I treasure that and I will treasure all of them for all time. I know that. We're a tribe. Love you, guys. Love you, Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. everybody. Hope to see you guys soon, really. Okay. Yeah, nice. Ciao, guys. Bye.
Let's start, man. Anytime.